<laughs> so um, next up, we have um, a, a, another tool, uh, Materia, that's going to be presented by uh, Francisca. I'm sorry, I don't know you, but uh, Francisca, Francisca uh, Yonakura is going to talk about Materia. And so if you are ready, you can take it away. I am. Very nice to meet you, Martin. Thank you so much. Same um, here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you all today. Um, I must uh, also acknowledge my co-presenters, uh, Mr. Corey Peterson, who will um, actually be managing the slides for us this morning. And uh, Corey, are you ready? Hey, yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, Josh, I'm still waiting on the presenter um, permission. All right, you should have it now. All right, I got it. Let's pull it up here. There you go. Awesome, thank you. You're it, good. Awesome, very, very cool. So anyways, um, we are here today to kind of uh, share with you, uh, by us and all, <laughs> but a new uh, neat project uh, called Materia, a system that was created at the University of Central Florida uh, to solve a need. Um, at the time, back in the 2000s, uh, for those of you who had been here uh, for the long road, those were the days of authorware and director and later Flash and all that, uh, we were faced with the challenge of finding a way to meet uh, the demand to create new um, and also modified existing multimedia components and game-based instructional content that the faculty teaching online and blended courses were requesting of us. Um, I don't know if uh, some of you know, perhaps, uh, we are known to, to have been pioneers in establishing online learning. And so we had a, a, a great amount of uh, faculty coming to, uh, to ask, uh, you know, to us asking for developing uh, you know, casual games like crossword puzzles, and they wanted to modify the content um, and enhance their content uh, for their courses. But anyway, so Materia is uh, is an online platform, sort of like a, a an Apple Store, an Android Store, if you will, uh, with a catalog of widgets in it that you can expand uh, according to what is requested of faculty. They can also modify it themselves. And, and um, you know, over the years, the, the two decades now, uh, Materia has grown uh, to, um, to sort of um, meet that uh, demand and the need, the instructional need that we have had. The system remains strong and um, it has more sophisticated implementations of instructional widgets that have been developed in collaboration with our faculty. So Corey, if you could uh, kind of move to the, yes, thank you. So what are some of those widgets? That catalog of widgets have pieces like um, uh, flashcards, uh, crossword puzzles. There's also a, a choose your own adventure type, uh, problem solving case uh, scenarios type widgets in it that the faculty and the instructional designers that work with them can modify. Also, um, in the recent years, uh, there was a request to have the students be able to create their own widgets as well. And so we have that. We, we even have a, a widget development kit uh, for those, of, uh, the, for those uh, who want to actually delve deeper than just modifying content. Um, lastly, before I pass it to Corey, uh, we are very proud of the fact that we were able to open source uh, this platform and uh, now it's being used in K-12, uh, also um, outside of the U.S. And um, I'll come back later to, to tell a little bit more about tomorrow. <laughs> yes, thank you, Didi. Go ahead, Corey. Okay, uh, like Francisca was saying, um, you know, Materia is sort of designed around these tools called widgets, which are kind of small, self-contained, uh, interactive applications that are customized with 
uh, content that the instructor uh, desires. Um, very similar to uh, H5P in sort of scope and function. Um, we actually authored Materia well before we knew H5P even existed. <laughs> um, but they sort of occupy a similar space um, as far as uh, you know, sort of small self-contained tools that are customizable by instructors and sort of insertable uh, into a course through LTI. Uh, so uh, like Francisca said, you know, we have a big gamut of widgets of various um, types um, and various sort of specialities. We have ones that are very generalized, uh, for example, something like Enigma, which is, you know, sort of a, a grid multiple choice uh, question uh, tool uh, to ones that are sort of hyper specialized to a particular um, instructor's needs, uh, something like learning a another language, uh, things related to nursing simulation, things related to teaching computer science concepts, that sort of thing. Um, and the process by which you actually author these is is incredibly straightforward. So we provide you know a very intuitive, useful uh, UI for actually customizing this, um, and then sharing it with students. We provide a number of options there. Uh, you know, ones the the nice thing about Materia is it operates independent of an LMS, uh, but it's also usable through an LMS. So uh, in our particular case, UCF is a Canvas institution, so we have the most experience working with Canvas. Um, but we find that that's by far the most popular way that instructors interact with Materia is uh, creating widgets and then embedding them as assignments uh, and then tasking students with completing the assignment as an external tool. Uh, when configured that way, we do have automatic grade gradebook passback, um, all those features that you would sort of expect of an LTI embedded tool. Um, it sounds like implementation for Materia in Sakai is imminent. Um, sounds like uh, the folks at Longsight have got it pretty much uh, up and running, um, and the, the LTI passback is is sort of uh, forthcoming. Um, but like Francisca said, uh, you know we are an open source tool um, because Materia is developed locally at UCF. You know we we are really um, focused on trying to broaden the community of people who are potentially contributing to this tool. Um, the Materia Widget Development Kit, like Francisca said, is a great tool for developers to sort of get their own widgets up and running nice and quick. Um, but we encourage anyone uh, at any institution to not only implement it, but also contribute to the code. Um, we think it's pretty awesome. So, uh, Francisca, I guess I'll hand it back to you. That's about all I had. Awesome. Um, okay, so lastly, okay, so I know there have been some comments about seeing the interface and uh, actually actually seeing it in action. Uh, please come tomorrow. Our workshop is at 1, 1 to 3. We love to uh, show you what it looks like, how it is currently being uh, worked on it to integrate with Sakai. Great progress has been made. Uh, and, and, you know, just kind of have yourselves uh, kick the tires, if you will, on, on the material that Longside has been able to stand up for us for the uh, workshop tomorrow. And, um, you know, to learn more about how might we establish and make that community around Materia uh, be stronger and expand its capabilities. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, just please come tomorrow to really get your your hands dirty uh, playing with materia and a couple um, of questions yeah um, one is probably for Corey but uh, Didi asked when does the materia team meet are there are there meetings of of developers of materia that people could join in on perhaps well we haven't um, no yeah sorry go ahead no no sorry <laughs> you go <laughs> Okay, yeah, we haven't uh, had live meetings, synchronous meetings. Our community has been uh, centered around primarily Slack. And so okay. if you go to the, you know, um, the UCF uh, open uh, source Slack channel, we'll put yeah. the, I'll put the URL in there, you just join it and you can ask questions over there. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So there is a way to engage, that's great. Oh yes, definitely, yes. Excellent. But, you know, and, we would not be opposed to meeting, uh, establishing yeah. some sort of regular meeting. If the community the grew, you would say that's a good thing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, and, and there's an interesting thread here from Cindy about, you know, how do I let my institutional administrators know about this? And the, 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 I'm just watching the chat here, and I think that, that Josh is answering it well. But 
you know, people may not know about it. So you, it probably falls to us to let people know. So that's okay. right. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Matt. you very much. Francisca yes, and Corey, you. appreciate Martin. it. Okay. Thanks. Bye.